Item number 2602 from Tuesday, 29th December 1998, 11.43.20. Subject, under enough pressure, ravioli behaves as a gas. Two. There was still one aspect of the whole concept of a ravioli-loaded railgun-type weapon which we, lolling about late on one weeknight with only a few neurons randomly firing, could not resolve. Would a chunk of metal, can of ravioli, impacting another larger rest mass structure, star destroyer, produce an explosion effect or simply punch an appropriately shaped hole as it passed through? From Tuesday, 29th December 1998, 16, 42, 06. Subject. Under enough pressure, ravioli behaves as a gas. 2. What am I, the neighborhood blast physicist? Well, maybe. It all depends on the speed of impact versus the speed of sound in the target. It was called the Mach number, where Mach 1 means the speed of sound, Mach 2 is twice the speed of sound, etc. And the speed of the ravioli versus the speed of light in the target, which I'll call the Kerenkov number, where Kerenkov 1 is the speed of light in anything, Kerenkov 1.3 is the speed of high energy photons in a water cooled reactor. That is why you get that nifty blue glow, and you can get up to Kerenkov 2.4 using diamonds and nuclear accelerators. In the late 40s, people used to talk about Kerenkov numbers, but they don't anymore. Pity. Lastly, there's the ravioli velocity expressed as a fraction of the speed of light in a vacuum, that is, a fraction of c. c velocities are always between 0 and 1. At low speeds, real low, the ravioli will simply flow over the surface, yielding a space cruiser with a distinctly Italian paint job. Faster, still well below the speed of sound in the target, the metal of the space cruiser's skin will distort downward, making what we Boston drivers call a small dent. Faster still, you may have a big dent, or maybe even a big dent with a hole in the middle caused by the ravioli having enough energy to push the dent through, stretching and thinning the whole metal till the metal finally tears in the middle of the dent. Getting up past Mach 1, say 5,000 feet per second for steel, you start to get punch a hole shaped like the object effects. Because the metal is being asked to move faster than the binding forces in the object can propagate the hey, move information. After all, sound is just the binding forces between the atoms in a material moving the adjacent atoms. And the speed of sound is how fast the message to move can propagate. From this, we can see that Wiley E. Coyote often reached far supersonic speeds because he often punched silhouette type holes in rocks, cliffs, trucks, etc. Around Mach 4 or so, another phenomenon starts compressive heating. This is where the leading edge of the ravioli actually starts being heated by compression. Remember PV equals NRT, the ideal gas law? Well, ravioli isn't a gas, but under enough pressure, ravioli behaves as a gas. It is compressed at the instant of impact and gets hot, very hot. Likewise, the impact point on the hole is compressed and gets hot. Both turn into gases real gases, glowing white-hot gases. The gases expand spherically, causing crater-like effects, including a raised rim and a basically parabolic shape. In the center of the crater, some material is vaporized. Then there's a melt zone, then a larger bent zone, and the raised rim is caused because the gas expansion bubble center point, the bending force, is actually inside the whole plate. If the whole plate isn't thick enough, the gas expansion bubble pushes through to the other side, and you get a structural breach event, technically speaking, a 
big hole in the side of the space cruiser. Compressive heating really hits the stride up around 20,000 feet per second, Mach 4 in steel, Mach 15 in air, and continues as a major factor all the way up to the high fractional Kerenkov speeds, where nuclear forces begin to take effect. Aside, the re-entry friction heating that spacecraft endure when they re-enter the atmosphere is not friction. It's really compressive heating of the air in the path. As long as the spacecraft is faster than Mach 1, can't know how to get out of the way, so it bunches up in front of the spacecraft. When you squeeze any gas, it gets hot, so the glowing re-entry gas is really just squeezed air, which heats the spacecraft heat shield by conduction and infrared. Hypersonic ravioli can be expected to behave similarly. As we increase speed from the high Mach numbers, about 10 miles per second, all the way up to about 150,000 miles per second, not much difference happens except that the amount of kinetic energy, which turns into compressive heat, increases. This is a huge range of velocity, but it's an interesting velocity. At high fractional Kerenkov speeds, the ravioli now begins to travel at relativistic velocities. Among other things, this means that the ravioli is aging more slowly than usual, and the ravioli can looks compressed in the direction of travel, but that's really not important right now. As we pass Kerenkov 1.0 in the target, we get a new phenomenon, Krenkov radiation. This is that distinctive blue glow seen around water-cooled reactors. It's just relatively harmless light, harmless compared to the other blast effects that is. I mention it only because it's so nifty. At around 0.9 C, Krenkov 1.1, the ravioli starts to perceptively weigh more. It's just a relativistic mass increase. All the additional weight is actually energy available to do compressive heating upon impact. The extra weight is converted to heat energy according to the equation E equals mc squared. It looks like compressive heating, but it's not. At around 0.985 C, Kerenkov 1.2 or so, the ravioli now weighs twice what it used to weigh. For a 1 pound can, that's 2 pounds or about 60 megatons of excess energy. All of that turns to heat on impact. Probably very little is left of that space cruiser. At around 0.998 C, the impacting ravioli begins to behave less like ravioli and more like an extremely intense radiation beam. Protons in the water of the ravioli begin to successfully penetrate the nuclei in the whole metal. Thermonuclear interactions, such as hydrogen fusion, may take place in the tomato sauce. At around 0.9999999 C, the ravioli radiation may begin to produce interesting nuclear particles and events, heavy short-lived particles. At around 0.9999999999 C, the ravioli impact site may begin to resemble conditions in the original Big Bang. Equilibrium between matter and energy. Free pair production. Antimatter and matter coexisting in equilibrium with very intense gamma ray flux, etc. According to physicists, we also may expect raining frogs, plagues of locusts, cats and dogs living together, real Old Testament destruction. You get the idea. Past that, who knows? It may be possible to generate quantum black holes with sufficiently high enough velocity can of ravioli.